This is the Value Investor Podcast with Tracy Reinick. All things value, all the time. Welcome back, value investors. I have a lot of ideas for podcasts in 2021, but I'm going to start out with the basics because I did this show last year at this time and it turned out to be kind of intriguing to look back and see what was a value stock at the start of the year. So we're going for it again. And so this basic show is just talking about what are the best classic value stocks to start 2021. I covered some stocks that uh, were good again at the end of 2020, looking back on what the show uh, looked at. And so, you know, I want to kind of see what areas are the value stocks in this year compared to the prior years. And are there any even <laughs> classic value stocks? I didn't honestly know if there were any because we had a crazy 2020 in a good way with most of the major indexes surging and value stocks even getting into some favor towards the end of the year and especially the small cap value and including like the small cap banks especially. So I didn't know if we'd even have any classic value stocks and I didn't run the screen before I decided to do this show because I figured there'd be at least one, right? At least one might qualify. So um, I took a look at the screen. This is the same one I've used many times on the show and you can find it on zax.com on the pre um, the premier screens, the predefined ones that are on there for Zach's premium members. But that's why I like to run it because those of you who aren't Zach's premium members, you can get all the details and all the dirt when I run it for you. So this basic classic value stock screen, if you remember, is a very narrow screen. That's why I'm concerned I may not get any stocks with it. And it has all the classic value components that includes all the ratios plus the high Zax rank of number one, which is the strong buys, and number two, which is the buys. Now, with just those two Zax rank, that would give us about 900 stocks when I last ran it. And usually, Zax number ones and number twos run somewhere between about 850 stocks to about 925, give or take a few in there. So that's a good chunk of stocks that have the highest amount of the Zacks rank. Now, remember the number ones are just a little bit over 200 stocks for the Zacks number ones. So the bulk of them are the number two buys, but the number two buys really can get you there too, um, the same ways as the number one. They both should have rising earnings estimates, which is what we want right now, especially as a lot of companies did see those estimates cut last year in 2020 due to the pandemic. Even the ones that had a rebound in business or you know were some kind of pandemic play, that doesn't mean that they didn't struggle on the earnings front compared to 2019. So we're going to we have the universe of around 900 stocks, and that sounds like a lot, but we're adding all these classic value ratios that I said, and that's going to narrow it down really quickly. So what are those components? Again, there's quite a few of them. So let me list out what it is that's included in the screen. So it's price to sales that is less than one, which we always use to run, because remember, you want to pay, you know, 70 cents on the dollar for those sales. That's what's considered a value then. That's the buying opportunity. So price to sales less than one. Price to book in the screen is less than two. Now that's pretty narrow. I usually use three, but here we're using two, so we're getting even more value on the price to book. This one has a price to cash flow of less than 20. It has a peg of less than one, which we've used many times. The peg of less than one, uh, again, it indicates that you're paying, you're getting growth along with uh, cheap earnings. <laughs> Basically, you're getting cheapness on that front and you're getting the growth. So um, peg less than one, forward PE, this uses forward, not trailing, is less than 20, which is a little higher than I normally use, which is 15, but less than 20 will give us bigger universe, and we're going to need it because this is a very narrow screen, as I keep saying. And then it has a volume requirement, average volume greater than 100,000, 
shares uh, daily. And that's because we really don't want, you know, a stock that only trades like five or 10,000 shares. It's just not going to be liquid enough and it's not going to do us any good. So we need over 100,000. And then it has a component in there about the last close of the stock being above $5. And that's also to kind of keep uh, companies that you know may have some other issues if it's under five dollars a lot of big management or professional portfolio managers cannot own any stocks under five dollars so it kind of keeps it um, along with the volume of avoiding some of these like dollar stocks kind of scenarios then this also has the value style score of A or B in addition to all these other value issues. And then obviously we're adding the Zacks rank on top of that. So that's a pretty big screen, very narrow, but that's why I like to run it because these should be the cheapest and the best of the best. We, both, we have growth. We have the Zacks rank. We have the style score. We have the price to sales ratio we look for. We have, you know, the PE that's good and the cash flow. And so what did we get when we ran it? I was a little scared, but we did get some stocks. We got nine this year. Last year in 2020 to start the year, we had eight. So we did get nine this year, but it can fluctuate because I ran the screen um, like the day before just to kind of see what was in there. And it gave me 11 stocks. So this time it gave me nine. So two were kicked out. I don't know if those were under $5 or what was going on possibly, but remember as well, the Zach's rank can change daily. So if something that was a two went down to a three overnight, then it got kicked out of the screen. So we did have nine. I'm glad it was nine. And like last year, I'm going to cover all nine of the stocks because I really don't want to pick and choose for this opening episode. Normally, I might pick out just five and go with those. But this time, I know you all want to know what are the nine um, because with these kind of market conditions, how, how can these stocks be this cheap and have all these great valuations? And what are they? What are these what are these amazing stocks? So let's dive right in because we do have nine stocks to get to and um, we can't waste any time. Okay, so the first stock out of the gate is Everest RE Group. Ticker is RE and this is an insurance company. And I know what you're thinking, oh, Tracy Insurance, right? Like we tend to have our biases and we're like, oh, that's so boring. But remember, insurance has been a pretty good performer over the years. And it's one of the largest holdings, obviously, in Berkshire Hathaway the, with the Geico. So don't just discount insurance because it's insurance. Okay, so they are international insurance and reinsurance. They're in Bermuda. They have a market cap of $9.5 billion, so they're pretty big. And in the third quarter, they said they saw strength in insurance markets. It was a good quarter. And they said, quote, it's an underwriter's market, unquote. So things are looking kind of bullish for them here. Their PE is 9.2. Price to sales is exactly at one. So they just snuck in on that component. So that's how they got in. And dividend yielding 2.7%. So that's not too shabby. We have three analysts on Zacks.com. Earnings are expected to be down 36% in 2020. Not surprising given the pandemic, but rebounding and up 80% in 2021. One of the estimates has been raised in the last 30 days, which is why you have the high Zacks rank. Now, what has the stock actually done? I had to go back and I just looked at over the last year because year to date, obviously, is just a few days so far here in 2021. But this, uh, company, the stock is down 18.4% over the last year. So they have not rebounded all the way back to their pre-pandemic highs yet. But that's why they're making this list, right? They have um, some interesting things going on and they are cheap. So that's Everest RE Group, ticker RE. Okay, stock number two is one we've talked about off and on over the last couple of years, and it's making the list this time, General Motors, GM. 
59 billion market cap is what they're at right now. Still a cheap stock. It's been cheap for several years. PE is at 7.2. Price to sales is at 0.5. So their earnings expected to be down 3.7% in 2020, but up 23.9% in 2021. So that's why you know it's making this list. Some analysts getting a little bullish there about 2021. It doesn't pay a dividend anymore. When I've covered it before on the Value Investor Podcast pre-pandemic, it was paying a pretty big dividend, uh, but they did suspend it during the pandemic. It's not come back yet, so no dividend. And then uh, what has that done? It's actually performed pretty well recently, and it's now up 14.7% over the last year as auto sales are hanging in there. People are buying those cars and um, they they don't want to take public transportation so cars have been a strong seller so it's not as cheap as it was a couple months ago but still remains with a pe of 7.2 i would consider it to be pretty dirt cheap here okay then moving on to a couple of home builders shouldn't be surprised they made the list they have kind of gone out of favor suddenly with wall street because Wall Street's concerned that all the good news is basically priced in already. Like, oh, we know it's good, and the pandemic caused this craze, and everyone running out to buy a house, but that's over now. And in 2021, there's going to be fewer buyers, and the mortgage rates might rise, so there's going to be fewer buyers because of that, too. So we don't like these stocks anymore. So this is why they remain dirt cheap. So the first one is KB Home. KBH is the ticker. They have a 3.2 billion market cap. They are paying a dividend yielding 1.8% right now. They are still dirt cheap. PE is 7.6. Price to sales is 0.65. They're actually reporting earnings soon on January 12th. So if you're listening to this after January 12th, go check out and see what they reported on their earnings. They're in 42 markets in eight states. And year to date, or not year to date, but over the last year, shares are now down 6.9% as they started to weaken here at the end of December into January. What do those earnings look like? So earnings estimates, uh, well, earnings are expected to be up 1.4% in fiscal 2020, but 47% here in fiscal 2021, expected to make 427 versus 289 the last year as all these home builders are seeing record orders and backlogs. So this is one to watch when they have their earnings coming in. And if these home builders start to sell off even further, could be a real buying opportunity if you can get them a lot cheaper. We always love to get them cheaper, right? That's the whole point of value investing. So Keep that in mind. Okay, the second home builder is one we've talked about too, MDC Holdings, ticker MDC. I own this in the value investor portfolio here at Zacks, and I own it in my own personal portfolio. It's just as cheap as KB Homes, PE of 7.2, price to sales is 0.79. They actually released their earnings early. So they just released their preliminary uh, earnings about a month early, which I always think of as things are so good, they really just want to share it out there with Wall Street because they're like, how can you think things are slowing? They're not. Here's our actual new report. Here's what we're doing. And so they said fourth quarter deliveries up 7%. Um, the average sales price now, 461000 That is somewhat of a concern as people are worried about affordability now with some of the home builders. Um, net new home orders were up 72%. So that's pretty strong. Um, dollar value of their backlog was up 87% to $3.26 billion. So some of the problem is, can they deliver all these homes? How many cancellations are they going to get on contracts if they can't deliver? Things like that will start to come into play. Um, But we won't really know more about MDC till they report in February. In early February 2021 is when they're expected to report the actual report. These are just prelim numbers, and they didn't give any color in the press release. They just gave the numbers. 
So and MDC is like the umbrella for Richmond American Homes, if you know that name. And they're in most of the major cities on like the West Coast and the Southeast of the United States. So the hot areas like Jacksonville and, you know, um, Portland, Oregon and uh, in California. So they're in some of these, you know, really popular markets and looks like things are still going well. So we're going to hear from KB Home on the 12th. We just heard preliminary from MDC, but if any of these go go lower, um, I'd be looking to buy in. Also, MDC pays the highest dividend of the home builders. It's currently yielding 3.5% and their market cap is 2.9 billion. So a mid cap stock there. All right, switching, turning the page here in my notes to some different areas, including finance. So the next stock, our our next stock is Manu Life Financial. Boy, I just mangled that one. Manu Life Financial, MFC. So M is in Mary, Frank, F is in Frank, and C is in Cat. And this one is a big cap finance company headquartered in Canada, actually. So their market cap is 35.9 billion, but Americans would know them because they own John Hancock. And they, um, you know, that that covers a lot of people's uh, retirement accounts and they do a lot of wealth management through John Hancock. They also do some insurance, including travel insurance and life insurance. So they've been selling travel policies during the pandemic, and apparently that's been pretty successful. So they said in the third quarter that overall demand for their products was robust and they have strong digital capabilities. So everybody's doing everything online and they're right in the thick of that. The PE is just 7.7, price to sales is 0.65. A lot of analysts like the wealth management area here going into 2021. People have been saving money. They are wanting to invest. So wealth management is seeing some pretty good earnings. These, um, this one also is looking like pretty good earnings growth. So earnings are expected to be up 12.5% in 2021 after falling 8% in 2020. Two estimates are higher in just the last 30 days for 2021. We do have five analysts on it. So it's covered pretty well for um, a Canadian company, and it does pay a dividend yielding 4.9%, so almost 5% dividend. Now these shares are down 12.2% over the last year, so they're cheap, they still haven't totally recovered, and you get the dividend, so keep that in mind on Manulife Financial MFC. Okay, our next stock is Newmark, Newmark Group. NMRK is the ticker, Newmark Group. They are a commercial real estate services. I know, I thought the same thing when I looked up to see what they did because I did not know them. They have 500 offices worldwide, but commercial real estate, very difficult right here. Um, these shares are still down 43% over the last year, but that's why they're on the value side of things, right? The PE is just 5.8, price to sales 0.65. So their earnings are expected to decline 45% here in 2020, not surprising because they are in an industry that's getting hit hard by the pandemic. But uh, they are uh, hanging in there and they said in the third quarter that they saw the, that the capital market group is starting to rebound and that they said they have strength in multifamily and industrial on the commercial real estate side. They also said that industry transaction volumes, um, while they've been down big, that's starting to recover a bit. So this is a little more of the dicey side, but this reminds me of like a travel stock where you know things will be better once the vaccine is rolling out and the economy starts to really rebound and reopen but it's just not there yet. But it still has that good Zach's rank because of the earnings rebound expected in 2021, with those earnings expected to be up 34% after the big drop this year. Now they are paying a dividend, but it's basically a token one of just one cent a quarter, which is yielding 0.6%. Uh, this is a kind of on the smaller cap side with a market cap of 1.3 billion, but 
again, this is one um, that if you're you're looking for cheap, but you want one of the rebound plays, this is for you. Third quarter revenues were down 25%. If that kind of tells you what's going on behind the scenes, so Newmark Group NMRK. Okay, our next stock is the ODP Corporation. ODP is the ticker. And at first I was confused. I'm like, why haven't I ever heard of this one? What is it? I'm trying to like Google it. And then I remember we have talked about it in the past because this is the combination of Office Depot and Office Max. And I keep forgetting that that's their name now, ODP Corp. I don't know. They could do better, don't you think? I think so too. But who are we to decide about the corporate names, right? When you do a merger like that. But this is dirt cheap. PE is just 5.6. Price to sales is 0.17. They have a market cap right now of 1.9 billion, no dividend. The shares have been spiking. People are diving into this one. Shares are up 33% over the last year, but mostly in the last like, couple of weeks here to end 2020, start starting in 2021. And then it's like hitting new highs here suddenly. We only have one analyst on it. Earnings are expected to be up 11% in 2020 and then up 25% in 2021. We're all still rushing out and buying new computers and things so our kids can study at home or we can work from home. And a lot of Office Depot and Office Max supplies are in high demand. So it's still cheap, even though it's spiking. That's the ODP Corporation, ODP. Okay, um, how many more? We have two more, so we're almost there. Uh, number eight stock is Sanmina Corporation, ticker S-A-N-M. This is like on the tech side. So we did get one tech company here in the you know classic value to start this year. And what they do is integrated manufacturing solutions. And some of their clients are in the cloud, the network, industrial defense, auto. This is one of those ones you're not quite sure. Like, what do they do, Sanmina? But revenue in the fourth quarter was up 13.3% over the third quarter. So they are seeing a rebound off the pandemic. Operating margins also expanded. They are pretty cheap with a PE of 9.3, price to sales of 0.3. Market cap is 2.2 billion. They've had two big beats in a row on earnings, like massive beats. We only have one analyst on it, so that could be why and uh, things are just a little bit more bullish than what that analyst is thinking. But they're seeing earnings growth for this next fiscal year of 14%, which is pretty good considering you know how cheap they are. And that would be $3.48 versus $3.05 that they just made. So nice little earnings bump up there. Now, what are the shares doing over the last year? They're down 5% still. So um, haven't quite retaken or busted out to new highs over the last year here yet. So that's Sanmina, S-A-N-M. And we're wrapping it up with one that I know I've covered recently. It's um, one in the packaging area, West Rock, W-R-K is the ticker. They have a market cap of 12.2 billion. As I said, they are in packaging. And in the last quarter, they said they had record September shipments of um, with significant box growth. So other areas they saw that were strong was food, beverage, and the healthcare markets, packaging for all of that. As you might imagine, with the record amount of shipments we saw this holiday season, packaging, I, I don't know about you, but I had, I had packages all over the place in my house. I'm sure you did too. It's time to think like who's supplying all these boxes to everybody to ship everything, or even if you're getting food shipped to you or whatever it is, some one of those people is West Rock, WRK. So um, they're in kind of a hot area. This is the most expensive stock that I'm talking about today. Its PE is 12.8. Price to sales is 0.6. They do pay a dividend yielding 1.9%. So that's an interesting way to wrap up this list. Now, you might notice that there's no big banks and there's no energy on this list at all. And some of that is because um, either they're too expensive they don't have the cash flow requirement 
or they probably don't have the Zach's rank. But the two hot areas that everybody keeps talking about to start this year, banks and energy may not turn out to be the real true hot value areas because they're not showing up at all on this, these stocks that are basically you know, being uh, ignored by Wall Street. When you have classic valuations on all the metrics, price to book, price to sales, PEG, PE, price to cash flow, and those are all dirt cheap in addition to the rank, then I would say Wall Street's pretty much just ignoring these areas and these companies, even if they've seen a rebound in the shares, it's still you know out of favor with Wall Street, basically. So I kind of like this list, and I'm interested to see what happens as the year goes on. So let me recap the list for you, because it was nine stocks, and maybe you missed one or two of them. So let's start again with insurance. We had Everest, that is ticker RE, we had General Motors, GM. We had KB Home, one of the home builders, KBH, MDC Holdings, the other home builder, MDC. That's the one that pays the bigger dividend. Then we had Manulife Financial that owns John Hancock, MFC, also with the big dividend, the 4.9% yield. Newmark Group, NMRK, and the ODP Corp, ODP. And then we had Sanmina Corp, S-A-N-M. And then we rounded it up with West Rock, W-R-K. And just to further on that idea of Wall Street ignoring, the Newmark Group, as I said earlier, is being ignored because it's in commercial real estate. And that's a very difficult area. And those revenues are still down sharply, as well as the earnings. So there's a reason that one is still cheap. But at least, you know, the analysts are thinking better things are coming in 2021. And that's why those earnings estimates are on the rise for 2021. So the Zacks rank will try and discover companies where the analysts have turned turned to the other side, turned to the more bullish side, and are suddenly thinking, hey, things might be better than what we're seeing or what we've seen in the past. And so it does try to uncover some of these hidden gems. It doesn't care if it's in an area that everybody is scared of or running away from, like retail or commercial real estate, or is boring, supposedly, like insurance. It just tries to uncover the best stocks with these classic fundamentals and the Zacks rank. So keep that in mind when you're looking at any of these lists. And remember always to dig a little deeper into what's going on with these companies. I just did a classic look at them and then I just looked at their last earnings report. I didn't look at, at the deep dive into what are their financials like? Can they survive another six to 12 months of the pandemic? All these questions, all these issues are questions that good investors need to be asking, especially value investors right here, because a lot of these are being ignored by the street. So it's a good question to ask, why are they being and is there something else there that doesn't appear on the surface that you should be leery about? So keep that in mind. I know several of you have tweeted at me that you listen to the show and then you do go and look at the stocks and the companies on your own and uh, do the deeper dive. And I'm so glad to hear that because that's what all good investors need to do. So keep that in mind. And as always, you want to subscribe to get our show every week. I am going to be covering energy soon because everybody's into it. I'm not sure it's a value here with everybody into it to start 2021. We've been covering it for several years, and I've done many episodes here on whether or not it's a value or a value trap. I guess I need to do another one, right, on those small smaller or even the larger energy companies because all i hear is exxon chevron i love them you know i'm buying it and all of that should value investors be buying energy here um, i'll have more on that in next week's show so subscribe on spotify and we're on apple Podcasts. you can get us with the market edge on soundcloud but be sure to get us somewhere and i'll see you again next week with those energy stacks Thank you.
This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.